Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Um, it looks like Unreal Engine has released their 5.1 update and it has changed some things in the UMG department. Um, so we're gonna talk about set position and viewport. Um, that was broken because they made some changes. Um, so now there's a different way of actually showing on-screen indicators. Um, so I'm gonna walk y'all through that. All right, um, so what I've got for you guys here today, uh, this is an example of a widget that I have in my game. Um, currently, this hovers over an enemy. Um, there are a couple different ways to do it with the new system. I'm going to show you um, a pretty complex way that allows you to have a lot of flexibility. Um, but there are a couple simple changes you could make that would make this a little easier if you're just trying to get it out the door. Um, so let's start. The most important thing of everything um, that we're going to talk about today is that you need to wrap this in something. Um, for me, I've got a canvas and then below that I've got the actual um, entire thing wrapped around another canvas. Um, so this base is actually the lowest level canvas. Um, this basically contains all of the objects that I want centered over top of my enemy. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because it makes things a lot easier for manipulating values. You don't have to worry about tweaking um, where they fall out. Now, you can separate them out. So if you have you know, two over overlapping widgets that you want to be um, sort of move not in tandem, you want them to adjust themselves based on where they're at on the screen in relation to each other. You can definitely do that um, both in this way and in the other way where you've got them on like separate, two separate canvases or something like that. Uh, this is just the most simple way to do it. So let's actually go take a look at the graph. So this is on event tick. Now with um, setting the position in the viewport, um, I believe you're pretty much required to go on event tick. Otherwise it will not go to the correct position. I tried a few timers and every time I tried a timer, it wouldn't go to the correct position. That may have changed in 5.1 because um, most of that testing was before then. Um, but at least as far as I can tell, that still seems to be the case. So let's kind of talk about what we have here. So we've got our tick. Um, on tick, we set the position of the canvas panel, that base we were talking about earlier. So we set that as a slot, as canvas slot. What this does is this converts it from a canvas panel object to a canvas panel slot object. Um, and then from there, we're inputting coordinates to move that item to. So this part right here, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is the part where we've got a little bit more going on. Um, so what this is, this is the local coordinate system adjusted. So right now I've got an F, or sorry, X offset for the minimum value. So it means the minimum that my X can be is 100. A Y offset for the minimum value, which is zero. Um, an X offset for the maximum value, which is negative 215. That is the maximum X I can have. Um, and then a Y offset max negative 90. These values are going to change dependent on the size of your widget. What these do is if you have a widget that you want to center on your enemy. So I have a little square in my widget um, that is next to the big rectangle of information. That square, I want to be centered on the enemy's position. So to make sure that when the enemy goes to the side of the screen, that the widget doesn't go off screen, I have to adjust for that. Count for that. And that's what this is doing. Um, then I have an X offset value of 50 and a Y offset value of negative 50. So this is the active value. So it moves it slightly, uh, I believe this is slightly to the right and slightly down um, while it's moving it. That's to actually line it up with the, uh, the player, or the, sorry, the targets. So let's go in here. This is a custom built function I created called go get local cord. So all I did is I added inputs here with these and then the output that's just called local coordinate that is a vector 2d and so what you want to do in here um, a cool thing that a lot of people don't realize is in functions instead of having to drag off for each of these pins um, you can actually just pull the value it treats it like a local value um, that way you don't have to have all these lines across your um, but anyways so in here you want to get owning player which this is something you want to set when you spawn this widget um, so whenever you're spawning your target, um, 
I, I personally should open that up as well to show you how that works. Um, so the way the current system works for me um, is I spawn my detected widget at the very beginning of the game. So there's a delay, I create some things about the ship, and then I get the player controller, pass that in as the owning player for this detected widget, set it as a variable for this AI, and then set the AI itself to a character value inside of that widget. And that um, sets up that widget with all the values it needs. And then I also pass the player pawn um, to this AI. And then what happens is whenever the player detects the enemy ships, um, what ends up happening is it creates that detection icon by adding it to the viewport. Because it's already created, all I gotta do is add it to the viewport. And then in here I have a timer that picks up this Intel value, which just basically allows me to track how much information the player has about the AI. And then when it's not detected, I remove it from parent, clear that timer for the detection, and then I start a new timer to slowly remove detection. Of course, um, if you went back to here, you'd want to clear these timers. I haven't set that part up yet because right now you only need it one point. And then over here, I have a hide UI button if I ever need to, you know, get rid of that. Um, and this is basically to allow me to set something as a target that is an item in that widget, but we won't worry about that right now. But yeah, so once I've got this all set up, so that way it, it shows up on screen once the enemy is detected. In here, that owning player, so that player controller is passed in here. Um, and we are gonna take that as well as the AI's target, which is, this is their base, uh, uh, their root um, object essentially. Um, and we get its world location, so the very center of that target. Um, technically it's not the center because um, the hole is slightly offset, but it's close enough. Um, and it's more accurate to what I want players to see. I want it to be overlapping the AI's hole. But we get the world location of that and we project it to the screen. So the player's controller, the world location, and then we want to make it viewport relative. And then from there, those two values come out and get set by that offset value. That offset value is the one that updates real time. That is the one that's not min, not max. It's the real time value. So we add those together and plug those into clamps over here. Clamps, which then have the mins plugged into the min. And then for the max, we actually do a little bit of math here. So we're gonna get the viewport size from the owning player, player controller. And it takes a size X and Y, and we add that to the offsets of the max. And we truncate those so that way we can add them all as ints in here. It makes things a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer uh, on the math side. And we add those to the viewport size. So that way, if, you know, whatever we're adding or subtracting here, we're making sure to have it be added to the actual viewport size. So that way, if the viewport size gets resized, it still looks the same. Um, you don't get some kind of weird scaling where items go off the widget and stuff. And then over here, these get converted to maxes. Um, or sorry, these get converted from ints to floats. Um, and then from this float, it returns a value, one for X and one for Y. It gets then plugged into what's known as screen to local. What screen to local does is it takes the canvas and the get cache geometry. Basically this says, what can I see? Yeah, here's the best way to describe it. It's the last geometry used to tick the widget. Uh, this is why you have to use the event tick. Uh, it's the same way in the old version, although you didn't use get cache geometry, you use something different, but um, it is required, uh, at least as far as I'm aware, for this to be updated frequently enough to actually show up on screen correctly um, but you get the cache geometry and you plug that in the screen to local it takes the screen position the geometry you don't want to include the window position um, I think technically you can include the window position um, this is useful in window mode but um, I've seen some weirdness with this occasionally so I for now at least have it off because I have my game all the time anyways um, but it's something you'll want to test and then from here, it takes this local coordinate vector 2D structure and plugs it into the tool. So from that, that just goes into the set position and you're good to go. 
So what this does, let me show you here. This creates an what's known as an off-screen HUD indicator, uh, which is probably going to be the title of this video. Um, so see how on the right hand side there, it clips. Right now it's locked to that AI, but if I turn too far to the left, it clips and hugs that edge. Now, of course, as you go further away from that AI, there's like math that determines like how far behind you it is and like it starts to rotate around. And eventually it'll drop down. Um, but yeah, and if you go like this, like this, see how it hugs the bottom, how it hugs the edge. It's always on screen. No matter what you do, it's always on screen to some degree. Now if we go ahead and hit F11, you can see that um, it pretty well lines up with the screen. It's a little bit offset here and there uh, because I haven't tweaked the values since I made some changes. Uh, but for the most part, it lines up pretty well. Yeah. Um, so that is the way you want to create your off-screen indicator. Um, and you'll just basically, as you go through, you'll want to tweak these values so you can get something more and more accurate to your screen size and your widget size. Um, it does take a little bit of time to tweak this, uh, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, definitely leave them down below. Uh, but otherwise, good luck, good hunting.